recording okay okay cool um so welcome to chem 150 uh this is discussion number one online um virtually however we will be doing another one on thursday at 11 a.m so this is kind of our uh, test run to see how these are going to work um a couple of reminders we do have that practice quiz that is still out there so if you have questions about that please contact me um because i'd love to help you out as much as i possibly can if um you don't do that practice quiz it's not going to count against you but um, we do have our first official uh, online quiz happening on thursday um, of this week of the, the week of the 23rd. So if you run into a technical snafu there, uh, it's going to be actually worth points. So that's why I'm asking everybody to go ahead and, uh, try things out now. Um, let's see here. Um, modified due dates for writing assignment are coming up. I apologize. I thought I was going to have those out to everybody today. I'll try to get them out uh, by this evening so that everybody who's watching this realistically tomorrow morning or, whenever uh, we'll have ability to see what those due dates are uh, I'll make sure that I put that up on the uh, support site you do I am asking you to uh, log in with your UND IDs for that support site because uh, of some of the material being on there um, very little of it is actually sensitive but there's a couple of sensitive items on there so that's why we're asking you to uh, log in with your UND uh, email addresses to view that material. Um, I think that's pretty much it in terms of highlights that I wanted to go over, but I did want this time to be open to any questions that anybody watching uh, has. So we'll take any questions that are on the, um, that anybody watching has. No, I'm okay. Okay. Let's see, I can't actually unmute anybody on here. So if um, if you're watching and it's easier for you to type stuff in than to unmute, that's totally cool too. I'll be watching the chat. Sorry, I'm still trying to figure out how this works out. No, it's totally cool. It's totally cool. We're all trying to figure it out. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a wild, wild world. <laughs> it is. So um, you want to try the uh some of the questions from that thermochemistry question sheet that are posted up on ace yes okay cool um so if we take a look and for whatever reason the number one here on the side is getting cut off and there that maybe that's a little bit easier to see now um so the first set of these questions are based off of the definitions that we talked about in the uh, first couple of uh, lectures for this semester, or I'm sorry, for this chapter. Um, so let's take a look at question number one. Um, number one's a uh, pretty straightforward on the uh, spicy scale, probably like, um, like a green pepper in terms of spiciness uh, of style of question that it is. Um, so if we're looking here and we have a gas that is absorbing uh, 45 kilojoules of heat and does 29 kilojoules of work, it's asking us to calculate delta U. Well, first off, what is delta U? Any ideas there? If you were thinking um, internal energy, you would probably be right. Now this would be one of those situations where your book has it uh, listed as delta E, but in the notes, uh, I've typically been saying delta U because that's more what chemistry people use. So we're looking for delta U or delta E. Are you all able to see the notation that's uh, happening on the screen for the writing? You can just hit yes or whatever in the chat if that's easier for you. Yes. Cool. Um, it's just really weird because this is such a one-sided thing. Um, this is what it must feel like to just kind of talk into a camera for 45 days. Um, I'm thinking about astronauts. I was reading a 
piece about astronauts and how they're like, oh, let me tell you how to live in isolation. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's kind of intense. Anyways, so we've got delta E, we've got delta U, same thing. Um, the equation that should pop up to mind immediately from the ones that we have in class so far have to do with heat, which we denote as a Q, and work, which we give the W. Um, these are way more, like the W is way more sane, just in that it is pretty much straightforward, tells you what you're doing. Now this kind of equation here for this work, um, specifically the work that we're talking about is work uh, with respect to gases, and it would be that uh, pressure change in volume work. So if we look at the question and it's telling us that we've got uh, an absorbance of 45 kilojoules, we have to ask ourselves, okay, well that's heat, so 45 uh, kilojoules, and it's gonna be important that we actually write out our units because what we'll find on a lot of problems uh, going forward will be that heat and work may not be in the exact same units. Like one might be in joules, one might be in kilojoules. So if we write out the kilojoules or we write out the joules, we're going to have a better idea as to how the units actually match up when we start doing the math. Um, and it'll let us know if we need to be doing some kind of unit conversion. So we've got the 45 kilojoules of heat, but is this going to be a positive or is this going to be a negative value? The key is coming from that term absorbed uh, that you can see up above my head absorbed is meaning that energy is coming into the system and we're thinking about the gas as the system so if energy is coming into the system that's telling us we've got ourselves a positive sign if energy is coming into the system positive sign so delta e delta u is going to equal a positive 45 kilojoules positive because energy in the form of heat is coming into the system. Now we have to ask ourselves, what about W? Well, W, now it's telling us, all right, we've got 29 kilojoules of work that are being done. It says the gas does 29 kilojoules of work. So here, the system is doing work upon the surroundings. So we can think about that as the system is doing the thing, energy is flowing from the system into the surroundings. So then we're going to use a negative for that. So negative 29 kilojoules. I like to go ahead and uh, write out the positive that would correspond um, with the equation. So Q plus W. Um, and then I just put the uh, different uh, um, variables in parentheses, especially if I'm going to end up with a positive plus a negative. Um, it, because at the end of the day, because it's not a multiplication, um, the positive is going to, or I'm sorry, the parentheses don't really matter. It's just a way for me to keep track of positive and negative. Um, excuse me, what I mean by that is if we then say, okay, we have a positive plus a negative, math rules would dictate that that is going to end up being a negative. So we have 45 kilojoules minus our 29 kilojoules. So delta E, delta U is going to equal 16 kilojoules. The in change in internal energy of our system of the gas after it does uh, work and after it absorbs heat is going to be 16 kilojoules. Does that process make sense? Just kind of plugging in numbers, chugging out an answer? Yes. Cool. You want to go to the, you want to take a second and try to do number two for yourselves or you want to talk number two through as a group? How would uh, doing number two work better for you? Why don't we talk it through? Okay, so so I'm gonna take the hard part because it's saying calculate delta E. So I'm gonna put delta E up there on the uh, the page. Okay. Can you guys hear my phone when it goes off, like on my computer? 
I mean, I heard it just then, but I've, it's no biggie on my end. Okay. So it says the system releases. So wouldn't that be? Okay. So I, when I think of it like opposite. So like if you think of absorb, you think it would be negative, but it's really positive. Does that make sense? I think of it like opposite. Okay, let me make sure that that's making sense to me. So, so like when I think of absorb, I feel like it's like taking away. So I think of it like opposite because it, it really would be positive. So like I just think of it as like a, you think of it like opposite. You know what I'm saying? Let's see here. Is that not a good way to go about it? Well, I'll be real honest with you. Um, I've just done it so long this way about thinking about absorb versus release and the positive and the negative. Um, I may have thought about it the way that you were just describing a long, long time ago, but I've just kind of brainwashed myself into absorb means positive and release means negative. Okay. Yeah. I would just think of it like a sponge, like absorbing. Mm. Yep. If you're taking stuff in, you're making the sponge yeah. bigger, uh, and that's like a positive. And if you're letting stuff out or if you're squeezing the sponge, uh, you're releasing stuff and that's making the sponge smaller. So a negative yeah. sponge as it is. I think sponge is a real good one. Yeah, yeah that's right. So right. negative 125 kilojoules for, oh, well, you know what we didn't do? Didn't sit there and write out our equation. I tell you what. So we're going to have Q plus W. And then so heat's going to be negative 125. Mm -hmm. Yep, kilojoules. Okay, so if the work is being done onto the system, and this is where I don't think, this is where uh, the sponge thing might break down a little bit with respect to work. Um, so this is where I think about like a canister. So I kind of just make like this little canister with myself, like my own little fingers. Okay. If it's going like this, that means that work is being done on the gas inside the canister. <laughs> And that's going to be a positive value. Okay. So if it, if the work is being, because the system is inside here, right? Mm -hmm. If the work is being done onto the system, then we're going to give it the positive. But okay. if the work, if the gas is pushing out, getting bigger, then the gas is doing work to the system. I'm sorry, the gas is, the system is doing work to the surroundings. So if like the, if the, if the cylinder is going like bigger, what's inside of it is pushing out against what's outside of the cylinder. If the stuff is pushing out on the stuff that's outside of the cylinder, that is releasing energy. Okay. That didn't really help a ton, did it? Say what? You just know. Well, so if you can, if you can think about that cylinder getting bigger or smaller, if the cylinder is getting bigger, negative. If the cylinder is getting smaller, it's done on it. So it would, wouldn't it be getting smaller? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Work is being done on it. So it's going to be what? Positive. There you go. So, but when I think of it getting smaller, I think of it getting negative. So I think always think opposite. That's my logic. Yeah, you're thinking. Okay, yeah, because you're thinking about it kind of like an engineer, yeah. um, and we're not engineers. Nope. Heck no. Heck no. Dylan, don't worry about that. That's okay. She didn't mean it. Not to offend anyone. Hey, I'm not an engineer either. Today's broadcast is brought to you by LaCroix, specifically key lime flavor, LaCroix. Okay, so we set it up. Easy breezy, lemon squeezy. Now it's a math problem, right? Yep. Cool. So we end up with negative 
Negative 21. Did you hear me? No, I didn't. Negative 21. Sorry. No, it's totally cool. That's it. Yep. And that's the kind of language that we're going to be parsing out. Um, specifically that are we gaining, are we losing, and what all different kinds, and that's why I was saying in that second video uh, about a thesaurus being your friend, mm -hmm. because there's just so many different ways for us to say um, gaining and losing. Okay. So work done by, work done on, uh, pressed out against, compressed by, right? Like if you stop and if you say like, if, okay, like, especially with, like, the work component of it, if you just kind of have your hand like this and you're going to be like, is it getting bigger or is it getting smaller? What are the words telling me? Um, that's going to be, excuse me, that's going to help you out a ton in figuring out that positive or negative symbol because thing get, like, the gas gets smaller. Positive. No, totally cool. Yeah, I don't know if I like Google Meet. I'm going to be honest. I don't know if I like it. It's all right. That's the least yeah, of our concerns. Kind of weird. Yeah, I. this might be the... We might try uh, Zoom tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just because it seemed like the bandwidth shaping was a little bit better through Zoom. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Ready to go on to number three? Yes, sir. Yeah. All righty. Okay, don't mind me. I'm trying to get um, this on my computer um, instead of my phone because that's going to die soon. Yeah, no, you're totally cool. Don't mind me. I might just have two people in here and then I'll take the phone one out. Hey, totally cool. No worries. And I'm going to, uh, after we get done with this, I'll post these uh, this write-up that we're doing here too. So maybe that'll help a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are we ready? Yes. Cool. So uh, number three is way more likely to be, uh, I don't know, it's still kind of like a, a bell pepper in terms of spiciness, but like I could see a situation where number three is worth like uh, four points on a quiz or a test. Um, cause it's kind of rapid fire succession. Um, specifically the, the humdinger on this is going to be, uh, question D because question D is kind of that, um, do you understand the concepts going on? So let's work through ABC and then we'll talk through D. All right. So, uh, it's telling you that Delta, you know, calculate Delta E for each one of these cases. So, uh, Delta E is going to be our Q plus W. So terribly exciting. Easy breezy lemon squeezy, right? We just sum this stuff up together and we go with it. So why don't I give you like 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and you punch in and you figure out what A, B, and C are. And then we'll talk about D. Okay, yeah. We'll all confer too about what our answers are for A, B, and C. Howdy, 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 howdy. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sounds good. Hello? Yep. I hear you. Going in the chat. I hear you. Hello? Yep. You're still there. You are still there. Oh, for you? I'm real sorry about that, Amy. Mm, what we got in chat? All right. If you can hear me, just uh, let me know if there's something I could be doing to help you out on my end, or if you can think of anything. Yep. All right, let's do it. What do you got for A? So for A, I have 41. Okay, so we're going to put it in, and we're going to say negative 47, right? Yeah. 
kilojoules plus our work of 88. Wow, in what country was that a positive sign? Um, kilojoules, and so equals 41. Yep, and we're going to just use the exact same for B and C. So what you got for B? So for B, I have 35. Yep, I think you're good there. And then what you got for C? Okay, so let's talk about, uh, yeah, negative 47. Yep. Okay, groovy. So now let's talk about D. In which of these cases do the surroundings do work on the system? So would it be the negative one? Okay, so the surroundings, so let's get our cylinder out. Okay, so if the surroundings are doing work on the system, right, the system is going to be getting smaller, right? Okay, so it'd, be so, so it'd be positive. So we're looking for a thing that's got a positive value. So it's going to be A and B. Okay, so it's going to be A. Because it's a pot, well, because work, right, yeah. for A is positive 88. So I'm totally good with saying A. And then what was the other one you said? Oh, so we're only working, looking at the work. We're not looking at the physical answer. That we're, well, we're looking at work. We're, we're, it didn't ask you uh, which of these uh, delta U values is positive or negative, right? Yes. Because so it's it A and C. Okay. Okay, the work is negative in B, so B is right out. There is no work change right. in C, so C is going to be out. Oh, because there's a zero. Because it's zero. That's right. So in order for uh, this question for work uh, uh, for the surroundings to do work, we have to have a non-zero value. Okay. So. Okay. Yep. So A is going to be our winner, winner, chicken dinner. Does that make sense? Yes, sorry, I'm just writing it down. No, you're totally cool, you're totally cool. But the key here is it's asking specifically about work even though it had you calculate uh -huh. delta E. And so that's kind of like one of those red herring, uh, you have to parse the question kinds of questions. Hey, that's what we're here for. All right, you want to do uh, number four? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to scroll number four up here a little bit. Okay, can you see number four now? Yes. All right, and this is on the support site in case this is not coming through clearly for you. Um, so that's could be fun, could be terrible. I really don't know. Um, as well as an answer guide. And I will tell you, for everybody who's watching the video, the answer guide has one typo on 3C. There needs to be a negative 47 on the answer guide that's under the discussion packet answered. So if you've watched the video, you're going to know that the answer key has a typo. And if you didn't watch it and you just read the answer packet, I guess that's how I'll figure out whether people are watching stuff or not. Um, that was not intentional though. I'm just noting that that is a thing. All right, number four. So let's read over the whole thing and then we'll start attacking it. Okay. So uh, internal energy change for each of the following. Cool, so we're gonna have three, it looks like we've got three different scenarios. So for four, um, we're gonna have A and we're looking for internal energy change. So again, delta E is equal to Q plus W. All right, 100 joules of work is required to compress a gas. So we're talking about a gas, so we can get our little uh, hand cylinder out and we can start thinking about whether the gas in the cylinder is gonna be compressed or if it's gonna be expanding. And here specifically, it's telling us uh, 100 joules of work is required to compress a gas. So. You are absolutely right that I'm looking at number five and not four. I scrolled it up okay, too high. I 
No, no, you're, you all are totally cool. So I'm, I'll have to like, when this is all over and we can all laugh about this kind of stuff, I'll have to take a picture of this like ridiculous rig that I built myself to try to do this stuff with. It's insane. Um, so like, yeah, if I look straight ahead of me, I just see a black screen, but I like look to the right and I see what you all are seeing. And if I look over to the left, I see what's recording and I see, uh, the answer key. So it's like stupid anyways, not an excuse, but it is the reality. Number four, a system proceeds to a system undergoes a process consisting of the following steps. All right. So let's go ahead and let's just erase what we had written there just in case it's not valid because we don't know if it will be. A, a system is going to absorb 72 72 joules of energy while 35 joules of work is done to it. All right. So in B, the system then absorbs 35 joules of heat while performing 72 joules of work. And at the end, it's saying in C, asking us to calculate delta E for the overall process. So C is kind of really the true humdinger, uh, the true question here. A and B um, are really just there to um, give us information how to solve C. All right, so if we're looking at, uh, we're looking here at four, um, A, system is absorbing 72 joules of energy. Positive. Okay, so we're gonna say 72 joules, because this is Q plus W. All right, now what about the work? Is the cylinder getting bigger or smaller? So it's going to be positive. Going to be, that's right. You're right. So we're going to have positive 35 joules. And so for part A, our change in internal energy is going to be 107 joules. Now for part B, and for those of us who can actually remember our alphabets, we're going to write a B. There we go. Okay, so for part B, system then absorbs 35 joules of heat. So is this for the second step, it's going to be positive. Cool. And uh, it's going to perform 70, 72 joules of work. What do you think perform is saying? I think for subtract that. Yeah, I think negative. It's going to be a negative value of work. That's right. That's right. And hopefully you ended up with, uh, for part B, uh, a nice value of negative 37. Hopefully I'm right with thinking it's negative 37. That's how we're really going to say that. Yeah, that's what I got. Cool. So now for C. C is the real humdinger here. Calculate delta E for the overall process. Okay. So this is where I'm going to remind everybody to think about what a state function means. A function is the value that depends only on the initial and present state of a system. So it doesn't matter how the state was reached. So it's where it was and where it isn't. That's right. Okay. So like that would be the initial and final? Okay. So yeah. what it's telling us here is we had a two-step process to change our overall internal energy. Right, so part one, A was step one, B was step two. Correct. It doesn't, but it, internal energy doesn't care what the heat changes were or what the work changes were. It's just saying, just combine the two work change, the the two changes in 
of internal energy in step one and step two and tell me what the end result is. So you're literally just adding them? Yeah. So you're basically saying delta E overall is going to equal delta E of one plus delta E of step two. Okay. So you're going to end up with your nice 107 joules plus your nice negative 37. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'll end up with, in most countries, 70 joules. And if you try then to go with this problem and you start trying to combine like the heat and the work and all this other stuff um, out of order, you're going to end up with a very different answer. And that's because your heat and your work aren't state functions. So that is to say, like in step one, we need to consider all the changes that are happening with respect to heat and with respect to work to figure out the overall change of internal energy because then once we have the change in internal energy in step one, we can truly compare that uh, and understand the changes that are happening in step two and combine them because both internal inter energy in step one and internal energy in step two are state functions. Does that make sense? Yes. Groovy. Want to do number five? Number yes. five? Okay. So far, this is actually, like, I, I'm understanding it. Good. Probably because it's easy, easier than what we've been doing. Yeah, so number five is going to be where we're actually going to um, throw a little bit of a curveball now. So, um, <laughs> so number five is going to be where we are going to up the spiciness. Um, I'm ready. All right. Hold you to that. So number five, A. Okay, so we're calculating the internal energy change for each of the following, like I tried to make us do last time. Um, but the good news is it's straight up telling us, hey, it's the chain, internal energy change. So delta E, delta U equals Q plus W. So we just need to figure out what Q is, and we need to figure out what W is. It's not bad. Okay. So in A, what do you think Q and what do you think W are going to be? Um, I'm thinking the gas releases 23 joules of heat is the work. Mm. No. It's telling you 23 joules of heat. It tells you. Because heat Q is so heat, 23 is the heat. Yep. So that would, that would be the Q. Oh. Yep. So the... Q stands for heat. Oh, you will. Okay. Yep. So, so because it's telling you right there that you've got that 23 joules of heat. Okay. So that's telling you Q is going to be 23, but you have to figure out, is that 23 going to be positive or negative? It's going to be negative. That's right. So 23, and then we're going to put our joules down here. And so up, we're going to add that to whatever our value of work is going to be. So what's our value of work going to be? 100. Okay, so it's going to be 100. Now is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? It's required, so it would be positive. So I would tell you before looking at required, look at compress. Oh, compress. It's required to compress. Right. So if it's compressing, we go back to our cylinder, right? And our cylinder scrunches. So it's going to be positive. So it's going to be positive. It's still going to be positive, but look at a different word besides required. Look at the compress. So negative 23 plus a positive 100. 77 joules. Yep. Cool. And you're like, well, you told us that that was going to be hard. Okay, challenge accepted. Let's take a look at B. So now we have a situation where uh, it's telling us a piston is compressed from a volume of 
8.30 liters to 2.8 liters against a constant pressure of 1.90 atmospheres. Okay, so now suddenly we're getting volumes, specifically a change in volume, but we have a constant external pressure, and it's giving us what that constant external pressure is. That's different from any of the problems we've done so far. In the process, there is a heat gain by the system of 350, and that's supposed to be 350 joules. So the J is getting cut off there, um, but it is 350 joules. So for 5B, we're still looking for delta E, Q plus W. Do we know what Q is from what the information is given to us as written? Yes. Yeah. Well, it says heat gain. But wait. Uh-huh. Heat gain by the system. That's right. Okay, so is it going to be a positive or a negative 350 joules? I'm going to heat gain. Pot gain means positive. That's right. Gains are good. Gains are a positive, right? When we go into the gym and we get our gains on, that's a, that's a positive. Okay. No one in their life has ever said we get our gains on. I don't know where that came from. You know, I, I make a lot of stuff up. So, <laughs> so when we're talking now in B, do we have a clear, uh, like smack you in the face value for work? Um, not that I know. No. No, we don't have a smack you in the face value of work anymore. And that's where I'm saying that this one gets a little bit more spicy. So we're going to have this Q plus W. We have to ask ourselves at this point, what ways do we have to determine W? Um, and this is like information that's coming from the end of the first uh, lecture and the beginning of the second lecture. Yeah. I'm really hoping that the mic is picking up like the sound effects of the note pages flipping because that's really awesome. It is. Is it? I, I think so. No, it's no, it's fantastic. I think it's a really good sound, like a really good like, uh, like foley artist kind of effect. I'm 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 digging it. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So I see the equation. We can use um, W equals, and I don't know if this is right. Um, negative pressure, I believe. Times yeah so now we have a situation where because we're dealing with a gas we we said that for gases work is going to equal negative p delta v now i personally always like to put p external um so i will put as a subscript that ext to remind myself that that's not the pressure of the gas it's the pressure of the surroundings. Mm, okay. That's how we're measuring that. Um, and there's going to be, um, I don't know if it's on this packet early on or later on, um, there's going to be an example where that differentiation between the pressure of the system and the surroundings, just uh, wording-wise, might trip you up. And so that's why I try to put in there, um, in that equation, W equals negative P external delta V. So now, with that equation, can we plug in some numbers to figure out what our work is? Yes. So um, we can do the atmosphere. I guess it would it be like negative one point nine zero times the change in volume which you would just find the difference yeah but the change in volume is very specific though right because isn't delta v equal to v final minus v initial yes right yeah so you would subtract would you subtract the wait hold on 
like the 8.30 subtracted by 2.80. So which one is going to be our initial volume and which one is our final volume? Which one's our final volume? The final is because it is a 2.80. That's right. So the 2.80 is going to be our final. And so then the 8.3 is going to be our initial. That's right. Now, I would suggest that you do kind of like what I did on the screen um, and put the all of those numbers in parentheses and leave the negative on the outside. Okay. The reason is, let's say, um, and this is an example of it, right? So you're going to end up with a negative value for delta V. I see people type it into their calculators incorrectly. Um, by, and for some reason, at least with the people I've worked with, and that's not everybody in every class ever, but um, by writing it out with those parentheses uh, very explicitly written, there seems to be fewer calculator errors. However, you feel good at math, do whatever you makes you feel good as long as you can get the right answer every time so we type it into the calculator and you get out a numeric value of excuse me Let's see. Okay. what'd you guys think <laughs> you, I, got you got what round it to 10.5 yeah i i just went ahead and rounded it to 10.5 no, you could have kept out plenty of other digits and you'd have been totally fine. Okay. Um, but what are your units? Our units would be, oh, um, I don't know. I'm just going to be honest. No, would it's. It be in joules? Okay. So yeah. for pressure, we had the unit of ATM. Mm -hmm. For volume, we had the unit of liters so we're going to end up with 10.5 liters oh, times oh, liters times atmospheres or atmospheres times liters whatever mm -hmm. liters times atmospheres does not equal joules oops it's supposed to be a j joules Liter times atmosphere does not equal a joule. So we have to convert. And so this is where a conversion factor is going to come into play. We're going to take our 10.5 liters times atmospheres. And we're going to multiply this by 101. That's supposed to be a 101. It's a terrible zero. 101.3 joules. For every one liter times atmosphere. And so then okay. units cancel. And we end up with a nice numeric value of... Cool. So 1060 joules, 1060 joules. But now it's cool because. Wait, no, I got. Oh, no, we didn't. I got 1063. Oh, yeah. I've got to type it in my calculator. There's a really good chance that you're right. Okay, my apologies. No, it's my fucking Okay, but Yeah, I got one oh I got uh ten sixty three as well. One thousand sixty three when I typed it out on the calculator. Okay. So uh, okay, okay, I see. Wait, let's just do this. Okay. So we just were, um, we had just went over this part down here at the bottom. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I just, I didn't know the 101.3 joules, like this comes in 
conversion. Is that the same? No, it's probably not the same as that. Okay. Yeah, I think did it's in the... the. Did you mention that in the slides? I did not go over that in the slides. I do believe it's in the book. And I believe that it's in some of the practice problems that I've got on the um, uh, chapter objectives part of the uh, uh, support site. Okay, that's the same as KPA or no? It is not the same as KPA. It's not, okay. Just making sure. I yeah. See, it's the same number. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's pretty quite similar, but it is not the same thing as KPA. So I see the way you did there, though, the conversion. So I just, yep. I just didn't have that one in my head. Yep. But okay, makes sense. This into the equation above. Yep. So we'll take all that that number right there, and it goes right there. Yep. So we're gonna take the three fifty, and now is that value that uh, ten sixty three? That 1,063 joules, is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? Um, against your constant pressure. Compressed. So it would be negative? I think negative, too. So, well, so the piston. positive because you think opposite. <laughs> Right, so the so the it's positive. It's positive. Okay, because compressed, I guess, like doing work. So the surroundings are doing work onto the system. Okay, yeah, it's positive. And here's another trick for you: you solved it as a positive value because you used the. I didn't know. Yep. Nope. It was a little bit of a trick, but it wasn't a complete trick. Be okay. The the little bit of a trick part of it is. As long as you use the right equation that work equals negative P delta V, uh -huh. excuse me, and then you do your math right, whatever answer you get at the end is your value of W, positive or negative. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But the, the value that you came up with was a positive value, and that totally jives with the things that we've talked about because we said the volume is getting compressed, yeah. which is a positive thing. Uh, in the way the way that we've defined it, right? So the math does match up to the language that we've been using. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You want to do uh, one more? You want to finish out with C? Yes. Cool. And then. Did the answer though? Did you get one thousand four hundred thirteen? I got one thousand four hundred thirteen. I I because I rounded the one thousand. Um, uh, 1,063 to 1,060. So, like on my answer guide, I've got 1,410. But, um, yeah, tomato, tomato. Yeah, tomato, tomato. Yeah, that's what he said. Potato, potato. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to do C? Yeah. No. Okay. Now I'm gonna tell you now. Um, I'm looking here because. Six will probably be where we start up uh, in tomorrow's discussion section. Um, six is a little bit more um, like six. Spicy. Six is a little bit more spicy. Um, six is, I don't know, what pepper were we on? Like a green pepper. We were on a green pepper, but then we went up a little bit because now we had the, now we have this new way of figuring out work. We, for six, we have to pause and we have to remember uh, some of the stuff from the gases chapter. So maybe it's like, um, now we've like thrown a little bit of the uh, medium sauce from Taco Bell on top of our pepper. I'm done with you. Mild, maybe mild. Maybe, if I feel like, maybe, eh, mild. maybe, I don't know. The pepper analogy only goes so far, only when you really know three names of peppers. Um, so, like, there's a lot of peppers out there, but I don't know enough of them. Pepper. Say what? It was a banana pepper. Banana pepper. Okay, yeah. So They're not spicy. Well, see, that's the problem. Sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't. It's like you get, like, the wrong one from Papa John's. Make sure you cut this part out, but, like... <laughs> 
show where they make people go on it and like eat like hot wings. And oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you'll know some if you was afraid you were going to say something naughty or something. Oh. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Because, right. like, so far I didn't. Cut that out. <laughs> I was going to say, I wasn't having to cut anything out until then. So now it's fine. Yeah, now now we're going to, like, have to fire up the editing software. That's fine, though. That's cool. All right. And then then we're going to go play some Iron Banner in Destiny 2. It's going to be a good time. All right, yeah, you just go play your Doom Eternal and we'll call it fair. All right. Or your Animal Crossing, however, you, however your gaming needs. Hey, I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying. I'm not knocking these things. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, I'm gonna go. I'm. I'm. We, hey, you know what? There's plenty of free games out there. Thank you, publishers, for being quasi-human. All right. <laughs> oh man. Uh, like I've said, I think on almost every lecture, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Here, here's been our digression for the day. Oh, you're not the one doing the editing. I am. Ugh. I'm totally sending this off to get edited now. All right. That's fine. It's fine. I was asking for it. I had it coming. All right, C. What do you think? You're reading through it. You're seeing this loveliness. And apparently I'm going to write in a highlighter. There we go. 5C. We got ourselves a piston. Not from Detroit. Um, expands against... Okay. Okay, so it's expanding against one atmosphere of pressure kind of setting you up to look a little bit like how B worked, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and now we've got ourselves a process uh, where heat is being absorbed. Okay, so yes. we're still we're still looking for delta E. Mm -hmm. So Q plus W, do we know what Q is? Yes, yeah. That's right, we do. So we're going to come up with positive or negative. Positive, because it's a yeah, it's absorbed. So we've got positive, right? And so the one thousand thirty-seven joules. Now, do we have an easy to punch in value for work? No, no, we don't. Cool. So what do we do? We need to do the um, equation. Yep. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. Work equals negative P external delta V. And where we're going to define delta V, and I cannot stress how important this is, it's going to always be V final minus V initial. Because if you get those Vs wrong, then like just the whole thing is, you know, useless. Okay. Um, Yep. Mm -hmm. Or 1.0 to the power. And then you would do parentheses. Mm-hmm. You would do the 29.1. 29.1. Liters. Uh-huh. And then you subtract it. Yep. Um, yes. The initial, which would be 11.2. That's right. So the... Now we have in a situation where the piston is expanding. Right. So our container is going out. So it does make sense that that final is bigger than the initial. So we do our math and we end up with a nice work value of. I got negative 18.5. Oh. Negative 18.5? Yeah, I got 17.9. Okay, let me, let me redo it one more time. Minus. Yeah, minus. <clears throat> what the heck? 
So I'm going to type it in mine again. I should really find an app that is a calculator that I can have up on screen. That'd be hilarious to only me. Oh, never mind. I got it. I got it. Sorry. Okay. It, it, yeah. Great. Because I just typed in something that was gobbledygook until I got a gobbledygook answer. So <laughs> as long as we're on the same page. So what are what are our units going to be? Negative. Well, that's the numeric value. It's going to be a negative sign, but what's the units going to be? Hey, it's it's eight o'clock. It's fine. We've all been busy. ATM times liters. That's right. Okay, so we're gonna use that same numeric value that we did before for our conversion. So now it's gonna be that seventeen point nine atmospheres, the one oh one point three joules. Whoa, go away, zoom joules over one ATM times liter. Cross out. I like how that goes. We should end up with an... I'm hoping you're coming up with a similar value to me. Negative eighteen thirteen. Yeah, I get it too. So I'm gonna erase that. Okay. And I'm gonna put in the one three here. That's a terrible three. There's a better three. Okay, so we've got a negative one thousand eight hundred thirteen joules. Mm -hmm. And here again we can ask ourselves what does the value of W need to be when we plug it back into our delta E equation? Negative. And, Negative. and that makes sense also because it's telling us the piston is expanding. And so if the piston is expanding, then it should be excuse me, it should be a negative value. So the, ne the negative numerically makes sense, or, the, or I'm sorry, the negative numerically and the way that we use our language uh, to read the question, both are consistent. So our delta E equals that nice, uh, wow, it's a terrible bracket, 1037, yep. Joules. Oh, there we go, joules plus a negative. negative. That's right. What is going on with this calculator? I got a negative 776. I believe you. There you go. And that, uh, well, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, if you're watching, uh, is going to be those first five questions. The key thing, hope, or what, what are your key takeaways from the kinds of questions that, or uh, the things to look for in these questions? The words, compressed. Yeah. yeah, look for those words, like is it being compressed? Is it expanding? Work done on, work done by. Yeah, released, absorbed. Yep, those are good, those and that's, I, I sound like a broken record and I get it. It's just really, this is like the chapter where we figure out how well you did on the SAT for the thesaurus section. Um, mm -hmm. Because they just, they do mean, um, they mean the same thing, but there's a million ways of saying it. I understand it. I get it. Good. That's awesome. All right. Do you all have any other questions at this point? No. So tomorrow, are you going to do this same thing at the same time? So tomorrow's plan is this format, probably based off of how badly uh, Google Meet went, probably do it via Zoom. Um, well, this is a lot of help. I'm sorry? Yeah, good. The format helped? Because this is like what 
is what I need most because with the lecture I can just listen and take notes but with this I like it because like we can talk through and like you know I can see what you're writing and ask right away cool yeah my my I'm trying to not um make the lectures terribly long I know they feel like they've been really long but I'm trying to like I'm trying to in my head keep them to 30 minutes of content and then keep the floor open for 20 minutes of conversation um, so like, I know the stuff that I've been posting up to YouTube hasn't been like the full 15 minutes, but we are probably spending about a 15 minute session in there for each of those, uh, recording sessions. Um, for the lectures, we're only doing what, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, and Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Friday. Yeah. And that's, and that's because of the, um, like just my kid situation. Cause my wife's. Yeah like between finding childcare for the kids and blah, blah, blah story that you don't really care about. Wednesday is my day. So I do the late night thing for this Wednesdays now. Okay. Okay. So one thing I'm looking at doing, um, and I'm going to kind of see how the rest of this week goes is, um, expanding to maybe another night session, uh, maybe a Wednesday and, some other day of the week. Um, it's just, I, I've got to figure out what people are responding well to right now. So, uh, cause I don't want to, I don't want to build a, uh, frankly, I don't want to build a bunch of infrastructure, um, and then be the only person who shows up. Um, yeah, I mean, I like, the, I mean, just for me personally, cause of work, mm-hmm. so it does work better, but I assume that everyone is like sleeping in or whatever their case is. Mm-hmm. And that's why they don't make it to like, the 11 the one that you have with the live um lecture mm-hmm. um so i mean i don't know if you're going to keep it at 11 because like for me i the only day i could do at that time is like um friday okay but, um, yeah i'm probably going to throw i'm going to think about it and i'll probably go throw a survey up after this first week um to see how it went for folks um and then tweak the system uh as much as i can because um like i want to i want these discussion sections to be i guess where we get the most uh synchronous learning to use a buzzword where people but then the the lectures obviously i would want people there to ask questions uh or i guess it's not obvious um i would love it if people ask questions during the lectures but i get that um people may not want to do that so i'm not trying to throw shade on anybody for any situation because we're all trying to figure this out together uh but i just don't want to end up like hosting like 10 hours of uh live video a week and and only four of it actually be impactful i want to make sure that whatever i am doing is impactful and if we need to change or add more i'm cool with that as long as it remains impactful Yeah, so tomorrow we're, I'm going to pick up on uh, question six and because uh, number six is kind of, uh, um, I guess it's actually six and uh, seven are uh, bridges from some of the stuff that we, like uh, some of the stuff that we just talked about into some of the more difficult stuff. Like uh, question number Question number eight, um, I personally think is a fantastic question. Um, but the <laughs> question number eight is probably, um, it's a very spicy question. That That is definitely got some uh, heat on it. Um, if you understand the chemical processes that are happening, as well as the thermodynamic definitions, it's not as bad. Um but it definitely has some heat. So I'm guessing that number eight is probably uh, really going to be the last question that we get answered um, in the discussion section for tomorrow. Okay. Okay. But yeah. And by all means, if you need, if we need to set up uh, be like one-on-one or whatever, 
um, time to work through problems that aren't being recorded or whatever, I'm more than happy to do that. Just shoot me an email. Uh, I feel like I've in almost every communication, like over swamped you with a cell phone number to get hold of me. Um, but don't hesitate about reaching out because I want everybody to be as successful as possible. And I know that chemistry is hard in and of its own right, but then switching formats and all this stuff mid semester, I want to do my best to make sure that that is not the reason that the class is hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, do you, do you have anything else you want to talk about, discuss, can I clarify anything for you? Uh, the quiz for points is probably going to be five questions like the other quizzes. The thing that's going to be different is, um, there'll be open book, open notes. Um, it's going to have the same kind of guidance that the practice one did. So basically just don't use another human being. Okay. Um, and don't you, don't use the internet. Um, so that's going to be, but everything else will be fair game. Yeah, and I think there's probably going to be, um, there's probably going to be three, maybe four, multiple choice, and then the uh, fifth, maybe a sixth question would be uh, like open, like numeric response. So instead of pick A, B, C, D, or E, you type in the actual number. Okay. Okay or answer the essay question, whatever. Okay. Yep, that's the that's the plan. And um, I'm going to, once the practice quiz is done, we're, uh, I'm going to go on to the system, um, see how people did with it, see if there's any major technical issues that um, seem to be a problem that need to be addressed. And once everything looks good, then I'm going to... Um, kick the um new quiz out to everybody i just wanted one in that in case there was an error or some kind of technical snafu uh figure out what that is quickly before moving on to the next okay and the quiz is on because i know we finished gases is it just on gases mm -hmm. okay. the um quiz number four is going to be just gases okay yeah And then the test will be uh, quiz four and some of this, uh, the thermal chemistry. Yeah, uh, test four, no, test three. Test three, right? Yeah. Yeah, test yeah. three is going to be gases and thermo. I think it's. I think we're probably going to get all the way done with thermo. Yeah, okay. Because what we'll, <clears throat> excuse me, what we'll have is... Um, what I'm guessing, and I just, I'm not, don't hold me to it yet, but what I'm guessing is going to end up happening is, um, cause we'll have a lecture Friday. We'll have a lecture Monday. We'll have a lecture Tuesday. We'll have discussion Wednesday. We'll have discussion Thursday. And then after discussion is over, that's when I think, uh, the test will go live and it'll be open for 48 hours and there will be a two hour time block for people to take it. So whatever two hours work for you, you know, and it'll be the same rules as the quizzes. Just don't use an internet or don't use another human being. But that that's my tentative thought process, but I got to put pen to paper, as it were, to make sure that um, that's going to jive. Because that gets us three more lectures and it gets us uh, real technically three more discussion sections in. So we'll be able to practice... Uh, more complicated gases here. And then we'll also be able to, or I'm sorry, we've already done a bunch of gases. We'll be doing more complicated thermochem stuff. Um, and so we should be done with gases and thermochem by the time the test comes up. Okay. Yeah. And then um, because we lost that instructional week, we're probably going to end up jettisoning um, a fair amount of the uh, 
what I think of as the more fun quantum mechanic stuff later in the semester, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. You, I'm not going to just speed through one week of material to compress it in on you all. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you don't have anything, I don't want to hold you, but I am more than happy to answer any questions you got. Okay. Don't hesitate to reach out, seriously. And if, like I said, the times that stuff is happening aren't working for you and you want uh, clarification or otherwise, you know, just let me know and we'll get something set up on a time that works for you. Okay, thank you so much. Hey, oh, wait, that's what I'm here for. I'm so sorry. Uh, Stop uh, everything. The last, like, the last stuff, do you need to submit that? Because um, I know, like, under your assignment for just the lecture, I didn't see anything. Is that submitted under assignments for our lab? Okay, so for the lab stuff, yes, that is correct. You are going to be submitting the lab stuff under the assignments on the lab, not so the Chem 151 course, not the okay. Chem 150 course. That's right. Okay. Okay. Yep. And the um, I should really make a separate video about lab because we know that lab got really wonky, and doing distance labs is even wonkier. Um, I don't know how you guys are doing this. Eh, we don't, you know, we're all doing it together, I guess. That's, that's exactly what it is. We're all doing it together. So um, the uh, gas laws lab um, video that uh, we made, we have that one that's in the pipe. We've got a thermodynamics lab uh, video that's in the pipe. You'll get those. And then I think the lab format is going to change for uh, unit three when we start uh, doing um, uh, is that chapter seven or eight in your book, not the thermo chapter, but the uh, um, kind of more the atomic atom chapter. Mm -hmm. That didn't make a lot of sense to you, but I, I was trying to say maybe it made a ton of sense to you. The answer key is posted on the discussion packet. That's right. Okay. And then I'm going to, the stuff that um, we made in this video, um, those notes, I'm going to export those and I'm going to post those up um, under the weekly lesson plan. So if you go on the weekly lesson plan, um, let me see if I can try to do this real fast. Um, well... I don't know if you guys can hear it, but my like two-year-old is like screaming his head off upstairs. It's hilarious. <laughs> no, I can't hear you. Okay, can you all see the uh, yeah. the website now? All right. Part of the reason I'm doing this crazy setup is so that I can do stuff like this. So under uh, week of the twenty-third. So on, um, I've got the. Uh, discussion packet link that has all the questions in it. Um, we've got the slides that we covered as part of that. Um, the, I thought it was there, but under, I guess up at the top under discussion packets and then discussion packet answer key, it has the uh, answer key for the thermo guide. And it also has a link of the original questions sans the answers. But like we talked about in this video, some of those numbers um, are going to be slightly off because I apparently decided that rounding was cool um, while I was writing that out the first time. So if you watch the video or you were alive, you're going to know that and it's going to make sense. Can I Oh, good. So when you click that, it doesn't come up? It just pops up as the, like, actual worksheet. I'm not seeing, like, the answer key. Oh, I think you have to, like, hover over the discussion packet. Or, yeah, hover over, like, the... Yeah. Right, I guess, and then below it, click the answer key. 
Yeah. So if you're, so if you go over to the thing itself where you can scroll up and down. Yeah, it's not even popping up on the left for me. I don't know why. Okay. Let me see. Um, hold on. I'm going to see if I can, why can't I keep manage? Sure. Get shareable link. I mean, I can see the, the unit conversions answer sheet just fine. But okay. Try reloading your, try reloading the website. Because the sharing permission may have been wrong. Yeah, I think that's what, what the, yep, now I can see it. There we go. Hey, we're fixing stuff live on the air. It's great. <laughs> Yeah, you all have no idea how tempted I was to just try to stream this stuff on YouTube Live or on Twitch. <laughs> this would be the most riveting content ever on Twitch. I think that this, would this be the, uh, was it ASM content or the uh, just chatting? I don't even know. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the discussion guide and my apologies, but you should have that now. You should have access to it now. And then under writing assignment, um, I'll make sure that I get um, the uh, updated dates. So okay. I'll change the dates in the writing assignment itself, but I'll also put on this page, I'll put on that page itself the dates in bigger bold letters. Yeah, I got to figure out the... Uh, the tech that I want to use to roll out that assignment to everybody as well, because um, I'm still living in a early 20th century world and think of this assignment in terms of paper. And obviously that ain't going to fly now. So yo, anything else I can do to help you? No. All right. Yeah. see. In that case, then, I hope that you all have a good evening. Please reach out if you need anything. Um, I'm here to help. Uh, and, uh, yeah, good times. Thanks for showing up. And thank you for your questions. I really, really, really do appreciate that. That makes doing this stuff uh, way more fun for me, and I hope way more impactful for you all. Yes, thank you so much. Hey, yeah, ha you. happy to do it. You too. Take care. You too. You make sure you edit that stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna see about editing. That's gonna see how that's gonna go. Bye-bye.